there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop. And today I'm going to show you how to apply a sky overlay to a photo that has a lot of trees and detail in the horizon line. So, um, so often when I do a sky overlay tutorial or when you see sky overlay tutorials, um, the photo that's being used has a pretty clean skyline. So it's, you know, a pretty quick and easy method. Today I'm going to show you that you can have a quick and easy application of a sky overlay even if your sky um, has those trees or bushes or, or you know details that you need to blend the sky with and you don't want to spend too much time. So hopefully these tips will help you today whether you are shooting on a photo that has you know a tricky skyline or one that's pretty clean. So this photo is the one I'm going to use today. This is a real estate photo from Ken Fine. He graciously allowed me to use it for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. First things first, I'm going to go to File Place, and since I am in Photoshop CC, I'm going to, mine says Place Embedded. I'm just going to click that, <coughs> excuse me, and it'll pull up my skies. Now you might need to navigate through your computer to find yours. Um, mine are already pulled up because I've used them previously. So this is the Cinematic Collection, and these are the Sunset Skies in that set. I'm actually going to use number 14 today. You can actually pick any one that you'd like for your photo. Uh, just click the one that you want and hit Place. And that will go ahead and pull it right up on your photo. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to change it from normal over here to multiply blend mode. And this is the best tip that I can give you if you're working really with any sky overlay, but especially if you're working with a tricky skyline, something that has a lot of trees or detail, leaves, things like that, uh, that you need to blend your sky in with. This one, as you can see, it's already put those you know, colors and textures into the trees with you know, minimal effort on my part. All I had to do is change the blend mode and half the work is done. So um, now from here, all I'm gonna do is resize the sky just to make sure that there's no gaps here. It fits to the edges of the photo. And then you can get started dragging um, or you can actually stretch it up from the bottom however you want so you can get that detail in the photo, the, the sky detail in the photo. So once you like the way it's applied, um, I'm actually going to drag this up a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so once you like it, just hit the check mark or hit enter on your keyboard and it will accept your changes. So um, next thing you want to do, if you are working in a photo that doesn't have the harsh lines like a rooftop in a building um, or a structure, you might want a more subtle, gradual effect when you're applying this. So to do that, you could just skip straight ahead to adding a layer mask, which is just this rectangular button down here with a circle inside. And then to remove the sky effect from your photo, you'll want to grab your paintbrush set to black. And you could actually make this, oops, sorry. Oop, making all kinds of noises there. Okay, so I'm just resizing my brush by hitting the right bracket key on my keyboard. It's right next to the letter P. Um, and I'm just going to sweep this, oops, I'm at 10% opacity, so it's harder to see. I'm going to hit the zero on my keyboard, and that'll bump me up to 100% opacity, so you can see. Um, now, if you are removing this from your photo, you might want to use a lower opacity. Here, I'm going to use 100 just so you can see my changes, but um, a lower opacity will make sure that your changes are more subtle and gradual, which really helps add to the believability when applying a sky overlay. So. If you want to remove this subtly, gradually, using a, a soft edged brush and just you know blending this right in might do the trick. Here, since it is a, a building and we do want to get straight up along the edges of that roof, a gradual removal isn't really what I want here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer mask and I'm going to show you how I would do it in a photo that has these straight edges. So first things first, I'm just going to turn the eyeball off on this layer and that will remove that effect for now. I'm going to click the background layer so that when I make a selection, it knows that I'm referring to the background layer. So I'm going to grab my magic wand tool and I'm just going to click right on the sky in this photo and that'll grab it there. Um, if you have any additional areas that didn't get selected, you can hold down the shift key and click those. Um, it's actually not necessary. We're going to add a layer mask and we can tweak you know, to our heart's content on that. So if the adjustment's a little rough, no worries, I mostly am just looking at the straight edges here. just want to make sure it, it kind of takes a little bit of my work away. So once that's done and you have your adjustment made, you're going to want to click back on your sky layer and then hit the layer mask button. And that will automatically turn that selection into a layer mask. Now what you'll have to do is turn the little icon back on on that sky layer to see your changes. Um, and as you'll see, it's pretty rough around the edges, but again, we, we can tweak this as much as we want. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my brush again, and this time I'm going to set the color to white since we want to 
add the sky to the photo, we want to make sure that um, we're using a white color. So here I'm just at 100% opacity, I'm just going to add this color in to the photo. Now, if again, if you want to lower your opacity and work more gradually and more subtly, you are more than welcome. It's actually probably the best way to do it. But for time's sake, I'm just going to do this really quickly and show you that even at 100% opacity, um, where you're not being very subtle, it actually works really well just blending right in with those trees. I just swept right over them and it added it in. Um, now again, you can always reduce this effect later if you feel like it's too strong on the trees and now they're too dark. You can lower the opacity of the entire sky layer to uh, lower that effect. So here what I'm going to do next is I'm going to zoom in and show you a few other tips I have for um, applying when you're working with a straight edge. So since we used a selection and it didn't really get everything right along the edge of that roof, I'm going to show you that if you make your brush a little bit smaller, and again I'm just using my right bracket key, um, oops, sorry, that's my, my left bracket key, uh, right next to that letter P on my keyboard, I'm going to make my brush pretty small, just right up along the edge. I'm just going to make one click with my mouse, and then I'm going to hit the shift key on my keyboard and make one click on this side. And what it does, it just sweeps in a straight line right along that edge. And it's, um, it provides a good buffer. So if you want to blend, the edge is already done. You just took care of it in one sweep. Um, and again, you can, you know, freehand it if you'd like, but holding down shift is actually a really cool way to just get right up along that edge. Uh, here I'll do it again and show you. Just make one click, hold down shift, and then click where you want your line to stop. And it'll just sweep right through there. Um, and if you're working on, you know, different straight edges here, you can actually do it multiple times. So hold down shift again and click here at this corner, here at this corner, uh, and make your brush as small as you want to, so that it um, looks nice right up along the edge. But again, hold shift and go this way. Oops, it didn't connect. But hold down shift there and it'll connect here, there, over here. So it provides a good, um, you know, protection for those edges so that you can just sweep in later uh, like this. And then you've got that, that um, space there to, to help you so that you can just sweep in quickly and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, messing up and going over those edges. You've already kind of um, adjusted those and gave yourself that buffer. So I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger here and just sweep this over. Um, and again, feel free to lower your opacity, be more subtle, more gradual here. Um, totally up to you. Now over here, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more, sweep up along the edge, and I'm actually gonna zoom in here near the strain pipe so that we can make sure that we're being a little more thorough. And the great thing about multiply blend mode is that even if you do happen to go over the, you know, over the edge a little bit, you're going a little too far with those lines, it still blends in so nicely with the edge that you can almost not even tell that you that you went too far. Um, and again, with your layer mask, you could go back and you know, change your color to black, remove it from any areas where you feel like you went too far. But with multiply blend mode, it makes it so much more subtle that you can't even really tell you know a mistake technically was made. So I'm just gonna sweep this in a little bit more. And again, I'm doing this pretty quickly. You want to take your time. Um, on your photo, make sure that everything's filled in pretty quickly. So going fast and at 100% opacity can can lend itself to some mistakes, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna quickly sweep in here with this. And zoom out here. Okay, so once we get all of this situated, again, you could use the shift and the shift method to make sure that line was straight. Um, oops, I noticed a little white gap up here, so I'm going to hold shift again, click, hold shift, and then click again. So I'm going to zoom out here, and now what you can do on sky overlays is if you want to kind of blend that effect that you just made, you can make sure that you have a large brush, set the color to black, and then change your opacity to 10%. I'm going to do that just by hitting the one on my keyboard, and then you can gradually sweep this, oops, sorry, set my color to black first. Uh, you can gradually sweep this over the edge to fade the sky a little bit and kind of reduce the effect, especially over the trees. Um, and it kind of makes your adjustments a little bit more subtle so they're not so harsh or, um, you know, it just blends it and makes it, look so, makes it look a little better, sorry. So I'm just gonna turn that on and off so you can see our changes so far. And the next thing I wanna show you is how to adjust your sky overlay separately from the rest of the photo. 
So what I mean by that is maybe your sky is a little bit too dull for how you know saturated the, the foreground of your photo is, uh, or maybe it's slightly different in tone and you just kind of want to make it look a little more cohesive. Instead of applying an adjustment, I'm just going to go ahead and add a brightness contrast layer here. Instead of applying an adjustment that affects the entire photo, what you can do here is you can right click on the adjustment as long as your adjustment is right above your sky. I should clarify that. Um, make sure that the adjustment is right above your sky. You can right click on the adjustment layer and hit create clipping mask and this will make sure that it only affects the sky layer. You can see the little arrow points right to the sky. It's showing you that this adjustment only affects this layer below it. So um, now you'll see that if I adjust this contrast here it only applies to the sky and my foreground is left alone. So if you wanted to you know change the brightness, you wanted to brighten that sky up a little bit or you know, just add some contrast in, you can do that on the sky layer alone without affecting the foreground. Um, and the same thing goes, let's say you wanted to do a hue saturation layer or something like that. You can right click on that, cr hit create clipping mask, and both of these layers can affect the sky. So you can do it on multiple layers here if you need to. Um, and then you can you know, adjust the saturation here, you can boost it or lower it depending on what your photo colors are. You can make it look really believable with your image. So, um, one more tip, sorry, before we go. I want to show you that if you, like let's say that you've added this sky on here. I'm gonna turn the saturation up a little so you can kind of see it. Let's say that you wanted to experiment with flipping the sky overlay like horizontally. You wanna maybe put the, the uh, sorry, oh my goodness. So you wanna put the lighter colored clouds over to the left side of the photo. Here I think it works pretty well, but let's just say that you wanted to switch it. Um, you could go to File, or no, sorry, Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. But you'll notice what it does is it flips that mask too. So the tip I wanted to show you, I just undid that by hitting um, alt Control z on my keyboard. I wanna show you this little link here. Um, if you, the link connects the sky overlay layer to the mask layer. So if you turn the link off, you can adjust the sky overlay. Let's say you wanna to go to Edit, transform again, and this time you want to flip it horizontally, it leaves your mask alone. So your mask stays the same right on the photo how you want it, but the sky will flip. So I thought that was a pretty cool uh, tip in case you you know don't want to have to remask all over again. So again, just you can flip it horizontally to see which way looks better on your sky. Um, and that little link will make sure that your sky masking stays exactly where you want it, but you can still adjust the sky um, even if you wanted to resize it later. Let's say you wanted to stretch it a little bit more or something like that, your mask will stay the same so that you can still have those edges preserved and you can just tweak the sky overlay to your liking. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash morganburksphotography. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.